Welcome to a JC Tools tutorial video. This is part one of a video series. In this series, we're going to make the grass, add end hair dynamics, create a sphere with end cloth, and have these elements collide with one another. In this first video, we're going to create the X-Gen grass. Let's dive in. The first and most important step is setting up your Maya project. When using X-Gen, this is a must, because X-Gen is going to generate its own folder structure and file path based on this. I'll just make a new folder on my desktop. Now in Maya, I'm going to create a plane upon which the grass is going to grow from. Now open the XGen tab and click Create New Description. So first, we have to name the description and the collection. Once we do this, we just click Create. This is what we automatically get with the settings we have. If we look at our new folder structure, we can see that we have the XGen project folder and once we save our scene, we have a .xgen file with the name of our Maya file. If we come back to the XGen tab and we come down, we can adjust the width and the length. Here is the taper, which you see causes the tip to reduce. If your preview window is not updating automatically when you make these changes, you can click on this eyeball icon on the top. If you click the arrow next to it, you can see that there is a check mark on mine that says update preview. Now this could slow down your computer depending on your computer speed and specs. If you have this checked off, this is why it's not automatically previewing. If you have it off, you can click the eyeball to see it. If you go down here, you can see the bend parameters. If we click on just the bend parameter and slide it around, we don't see any changes to our scene. That's because it doesn't know in which direction we want to bend. We can tell this by adjusting the U and V bend parameters. If I start adjusting one of these parameters, you see that all of the grass bends exactly the same way. Now if I adjust the bend parameter, you can see that grass adjusts the bend based on the length of the hair. This uniform look is not appealing and doesn't resemble true grass, so we have to give some randomization. If we click this icon, we can add an expression. Expressions in Maya are written in Mel, which is the Maya embedded language. If I type here rand and parentheses, you see that I immediately get this pop-up. Rand is the command for random, and inside the parentheses, I have to type the minimum number, comma, the maximum number of random that I want in my scene. Now, if I click apply, you can see that all of the grass has been randomly assigned a bend number between my minimum and maximum numbers. I can create a similar expression on each of the bend parameters and slightly change the numbers to give it a more organic and natural look. Now here's the density of how much grass we have. I can adjust this number as I please. Let's say this is a good number. Now I've decided that this amount of density is a good number for me, but I have all this grass in my viewport and it could possibly slow down my computer. To prevent it from slowing my computer, I can come here to preview slash output and lower the percentage that is visible. I want to only see 10% of my grass. This will not affect my render only my viewport performance and speed of my computer. Now let's start introducing Arnold renders and really see what this grass looks like. In Arnold, the first thing that you need to render in your scene is a light. For this, we are going to use an AI sky dome light. I'm then gonna put an HDRI image. HDRI images are high quality resolution images that when used in application with Maya have information that can be used to light the scene. The actual colors and light intensity of the image is what will project onto your scene. HDRIs are easy to find. You can just go to Google and type free HDRIs. And here in HDRI heaven, you have access to all of these different HDRIs. I'm not a paid sponsor, I just really enjoy their product. So I downloaded one and I saved it inside of my Maya project folder, and created a new folder called source images. In the Arnold shader under base color, you can click this icon, select file, and put in the file path of where your HDRI lives. Now I'm rotating to get the sun in the position that I like. And once you hit render, you can see that 100% density of your grass is being rendered even though my viewport only sees 10%. Now we have to assign a shader to the grass. We start by assigning an AI standard shader to the XGen description. For XGen purposes, we have to add an additional step to get our random colors in our green grass because not all grass has the same exact color of green. So we have to create an AI user data color node. 
Here, we name the attribute grass color. Then click and drag the out color from this node. You will get this string following your mouse as you hold it and attach it to the base color of your Arnold shader. Once you have this, we need to go back to the XGen tab. Come here to where it says custom shader parameters. We have to type the same attribute name in order for XGen to find the correct shader. Change this to color and hit the plus sign. Again, we want random, so we have to create an expression. This time, because we are dealing with color, we have to write the expression a bit differently. In Maya, color is calculated as RGB, red, green, and blue. And the way it determines the red, green, and blue is through the number values of zero through one. Zero is 0%, zero while one is 100% of that color. So if we want something 100% red, we would type parentheses one comma zero comma zero parentheses. If we want something 100% green, we type parentheses zero comma one comma zero parentheses and so forth. All other colors are created with the combination of these three colors. So if you want yellow, you would type 0 0.5 comma 0 0.5 comma zero. In this instance, we're going to have a small amount of random red a small amount of random blue and 100% green to get our variations in green. If this is your first time using color expressions, take a pause here and type in different expression numbers to see what colors you can make. Once I hit apply, you see that my Arnold renderer updates automatically, giving me the green grass. In the Arnold shader, I can adjust other parameters and you can see how this shader is connected to the XGen grass. And now I have control over so many different attributes, I can really play around and make this grass look the way that I want. So there you go. You have made X-Gen grass with a random variation of color. Take some time to play with the settings in both X-Gen and Arnold Shader to get a look that you want. Part 2 of this video will show you how to add end hair dynamics to your new X-Gen grass. Make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe to this video and let me know any other types of tutorials you'd like to see on this site. Also, make sure to check out our website for some additional information and some cool things that we have for you.